this afternoon, Big East basketball on the banks of the Ohio River. It's senior day as West Virginia hosts Rutgers at the Civic Center in Wheeling. Today, senior Marcus Gorey plays his last regular season game at West Virginia. He and the rest of the Mountaineers will look to sweep a Rutgers Scarlet Knights team that lost a heartbreaker the last time these two clubs met. Today's winner will secure a higher seed in the Big East Tournament, where both could meet in the first round. It's Rutgers in West Virginia next. This is it, final regular season game of Big East play for both the Scarlet Knights and the Mountaineers trying to sort things out in the middle of the Big East pack as we prepare for the seedings and the games that are coming up in the Big East Championship in Madison Square Garden on Wednesday. And today we'll go a long way toward determining which team will play which team. We welcome you to the Civic Center in Wheeling. I'm John Sanders, along with Bob Valvano and, of course, the Scarlet Knights in position maybe to go to the NIT for a second straight year. Well, this is an important game for them. If they win it, it guarantees them a winning season. One could assume, then, that they would get that NIT bid. West Virginia, on the other hand, with a win, could leapfrog past the Scarlet Knights in the seedings for the tournament. So there's still a lot at stake for the last regular season game for these two ball clubs. And last regular season game ever for Marcus Gorey. No more double zero for the Mountaineers. Well, this young man has already had an impressive of array of abilities and accomplishments and he's only added to it this year this is what he's always been able to do inside you see the good strong two-hand finish now watch him on the defensive end the good left-handed rejection he's been a force defensively but this is the part of his game he's added this year the three-point shooting he's been playing more of a three-man for the Mountaineers this year really has added to the elements look at that only 10 three-point attempts thus far going into this season he's already made 20 this year out of 51 a good percentage so he has really added to his all-around game but his game is going to be ending for the Mountaineers here this afternoon. It is senior day. On the other hand, another tough loss last Monday for the Scarlet Knights as they dropped one to UConn. Dante Jones poured in 25 points in that game. We'll have the starters for the Mountaineers and the Scarlet Knights after this. New Dakota Quad Cab comes with a nice big bed at Big Back. Hi. Oh, yeah. This Big East game is brought to you by 7-Up. Make 7-Up yours. By Dodge, in a perfect world, everything would be different. By AT&T, one rate, seven cent plan. One simple rate, all day, every day. By Sam Adams, it's what's inside. And by National Car Rental, what are you waiting for? Let's go. We're a chip shot away from the Ohio River. Beautiful day here in the Wheeling, West Virginia area as we come inside for Senior Day. Marcus Story, one of three seniors being honored. All three seniors will start this afternoon. Brad McMillan, Jason D'Alessio are the other seniors. But let's meet the starting lineup for the Scarlet Knights of Rutgers University. Joel Salvi gets the start this afternoon. Rashad Kent, because of disciplinary reasons, will not start. It is Billet, Jones, Greer, and Dabney as the center. For head coach Kevin Bannon winding up his third season at the helm in Piscataway. Starting lineup for the Mountaineers does include those three seniors, but keep your eye on Calvin Bowman. He had the game winner as West Virginia pulled one out on January 15th against Rutgers and Gail Catlett completing his 22nd year at the helm in Morgantown, although he hasn't played in Morgantown this year. Every game has been on the road. Our referee, Jody Sylvester, and this is his final Big East regular season game. He will be at the tournament 30 years at Division I, 40 years coaching overall. His final Big East regular season game. There is a photographer here following him as well, and we will all miss the smiling face of Jody Sylvester after this season. John Cowell and Will Bush are the other officials, and we are set for basketball from the Civic Center in Wheeling, West Virginia. The Mountaineers control the opening tip. Alessio, a four-year walk-on. He has started quite a bit this year in the absence of Lyles. There's McMillan, who does not play very much. He's a junior college transfer. Bowman has it along the baseline. Alessio shoots a three, and it's off the mark. Salvi the rebound. One of the things Salvi gives them, as you know, John, great rebounding, the leading rebounder in the conference for Rutgers. 
And he gives them great emotion. They'll need it today. Kind of an unusual setting here. They could use the fire that Joel Salvi brings. And he's given his fans back in Piscataway two different wigs to wear because he's changed his hairstyle completely. <laughs> So it's the marketing ploy. Yeah, exactly. You gotta sell those things. <laughs> Three-pointer by Greer is good. Three by number 25, Jeff Well, Greer. that's gonna be huge, obviously, for Rutgers with the number of three-point shots those guys knock down, especially in relation to what West Virginia does. A good start for the Scarlet Knights there. Here is Barry running out on the perimeter. Now they reverse the basketball, still trying to look inside. They get it to Bowman. Goes into the lane, the shot is blocked by Dabney, and Salvi has the rebound, but Galesio picks it out of there and will go to the line. Well, that's a nice start on senior day for Galesio. Gets the turnover in the backcourt, the bucket and a foul, and a chance to tie the ball game. A little emotional lift for his ball club. Galesio only played in nine games last year and scored a grand total of five points the entire season. So this has been a coming out season for the walk-on. Well, he's a good-looking kid, and I'm not saying that because he's Italian. No, of course because, not. Because I'm Italian, but he is uh, obviously very excited about this. He gets his uh, team off to a good start here. And ties the game as he completes the old-fashioned three-point play. A senior from Weirton, West Virginia. West Virginia showed a little pressure earlier, which is something they did a couple of years ago. Haven't done much this year, though, but they're very aggressive and active in the early going. And a foul on Delessio. That was a, a bailout there because they had Greer in the perfect position to trap. Let's take a look at your Dodge keys to the game for Rutgers this afternoon. Well, obviously, the first thing you saw were the perimeter looks. You're the first basket, a three-point shot. Their usual three starters on the perimeter have more three-pointers than the entire West Virginia team. And they've got to make some plays late. They have been close in so many games this year. Three out of 12 in games decided by six points or less. They need somebody to step up and make a play in the last three, four minutes of this ballgame. It is a little scary when nine of your losses have come by six points or less. I just think if you could just turn that around halfway, what your numbers would be. One and six, John, in the conference in games like that. Here is Barry for West Virginia. We're tied. He splits the defense and draws a foul as he hits the deck. How about the Dodge Keys for West Virginia? Well, West Virginia's advantage tremendously is on the interior, and you saw that earlier. They tried to go inside to Bowman. Gorey gives them a great inside presence. They have to defend the York. Their five-game winning streak in January, they only gave up 29% from behind the three-point line. This five-game losing streak, they're giving up 44%, a huge difference, and especially against the way Rutgers plays, they're going to have to defend the York. Working off of Gorey, turns, is wide open, shoots, and nails it. West Virginia has its first lead, 5-3, still early here at the Civic Center in Wheeling. I'm John Sanders, along with Bob Balvano. Glad you could spend part of your Saturday with us. Salvi ties it. Well, the guys who are getting their unusual starts off to good starts. Salvi, of course, usually the sixth man for the Well, there's that three you talked about, and he misses that one. Good-looking stroke, though. You can see why he's shooting a good percentage from there. Here comes Jones down the lane, crashing in and scoring his first basket. Well, Kevin Bannon would tell you that's a key for Rutgers. Even though they don't want to play racehorse basketball, they've got to get some easy looks. If they have to play all half-court offense, very difficult for them to shoot a good percentage. That's an important basket for them. I think there's a feeling, uh, at least around the Rutgers program, that Dante Jones is about ready to step up with the elite in the Big East Conference. Barry with a three-pointer. Well, again, as I said, the guys who don't usually get the nod in the start making the most of it for both teams. Good looking three right there. And matching the Scarlet Knights from the perimeter. Mountaineers by a point. Salvi starts a move on Bowman. He cuts him off. They come out to Billet. And now Jones. Just off the lane, he buries that one. Here's another guy whose confidence and his abilities have improved all throughout this season. Uh, you really see it anytime you get a freshman, no matter how talented, by the end of the season, they don't play like freshmen anymore. Well, his brother, Jeff, was a terrific college basketball player. That foul's going to go on Brooks Berry. Gorey got the ball in a spot that uh, tough to pass out of when you get that trap on the baseline. And he's usually a pretty solid passer. I saw the game in Connecticut last week, was there, very impressed, even though he was not the high scorer. Bowman had 29. He made some terrific passes, just a solid all-around game. And uh, that was unusual. He made a difficult pass out of the double team to led to the turnover. Well, with him leaving, Bowman and probably Chris Moss are going to have to step up and do some inside scoring next year. And a guy getting ready to check into the ball game also will have to step up. Lionel Armstead, who's had some big games. 
Here's Dabney from outside. That's too strong, and there's Bowman with a rebound for the Mountaineers. West Virginia down by a point. That's the good pass out of the double team. Bowman gets his own rebound and lays it in. That's, that's what they did so, so very, very well against Connecticut. The quick pass out of the double team. Bowman made the nice slash to the goal. Here is Salvi. They've got numbers. Jones spots outside for a two, and it is good. Jones gets his second field goal. He's got that quirky little release, John, but he can knock it down. Here's Barry. He's a good shooter when he gets hot. He has struggled at times with that shot. Now 18 of 55 and threes. Bowman down the lane off the mark. Tipped out of bounds, and it belongs to the Scarlet Knights. We have our first timeout with 15 12 to play in the opening half. And right now, it is Rutgers by a point over the Mountaineers. Rutgers has the lead. Bob, you talked about it. These two teams have something to play for here today, and they're playing like it. We've had six lead changes already. Well, here's Barry from the perimeter. A good look. He's only about a 32% three-point shooter, but he has taken 50-some-odd during the year. And here's the nice cut to the goal by Bowman off the pass from Glory. That's what he did so well last week when I saw him play. And Bowman with a good offensive second effort. And uh, as we talked about at the top, they've got to be able to dominate inside West Virginia. And a good start from the field for Rutgers. It was Bowman who, with uh, just over six seconds, Seconds to go hit the winning basket on January 15th as the Mountaineers defeated the Scarlet Knights at the rack. Rutgers had some problems, John, early in the year against pressure, and West Virginia showing some different looks in the full court pressure early in this ballgame. Like his brother, Billet is an excellent three point shooter, and right now the Knights are on the perimeter. Tipped out of bounds, touch last by Todd Billet. We talked about the last meeting between these two teams at the rack. There are some of the numbers. Mountaineers won by two. Gorey had 16. And you see the inside presence, but the big thing is defending the arc. West Virginia did a good job. And here's Gorey inside. We talked about that. He's always been able to get it done to get it to him around the goal. No mistakes there. Seventh lead change. Now the Mountaineers on top 12-10. Just over five minutes into this opening half. Jones loves to drive Salvi from just beyond the foul line, and he is two of two. So Joel Salvi getting the start. Basket by number three. They really consider him a starter, as you know, John. They just bring him off the bench because it gives their team an emotional lift, and they like to do it for psychological reasons. But he certainly has clearly been one of their most effective players, and as we talked about in conference, one of their best rebounders. And, of course, the problem for him often is getting in foul trouble. So you've got to spot his minutes and yes. use him sparingly. Armstead in the lineup, Moss as well. They get it to Bowman along the baseline. Turns toward the lane, puts up the shot, and it goes. I'll tell you, those two guys get it going inside. That West Virginia has as, as nice an inside tandem. Gorey and uh, Bowman in there. They both know how to play around the basket. Foul is going to be on Moss. This is another player who runs into some foul troubles from time to time. There is Rashad Kent. Did not start today because of... Uh, disciplinary reasons, but he is on the court and he is from Fairmont, which is just a few minutes south of Morgantown. By the way, just in fairness, there's so many things going on now with players in one day, out the next. It is important. This is just a good old fashioned. He got tossed out of practice. Just, oh, nice block by Gorey. Number 65 for Gorey. <laughs> that was a catch more than a block. It was a steal, maybe. <laughs> Along the backboard. Bowman inside lays it in. Well, that got him going emotionally. See a little hop in the step now the Mountaineers. Three-point lead. Giving them different here. looks in the defense, and it's causing some problems for Rutgers. Gorey on the floor. Ball, ball, it's a hell ball. Possession arrow is going to keep ball, it at this ball, end. Start to say about Kent, though, John. Just uh, in practice, uh, Kevin Bannon said just didn't particularly like the effort and decided to make a change in the starting line. Nothing more serious than that. Watch this. I'll take that. Thank you. <laughs> a terrific effort by Marcus Gorey. One of the three seniors honored. And there's that pressure defense. 
You know, it's so funny, John, how some plays just make a huge difference in the uh, uh, flow of the game. That block, look at West Virginia the last two possessions. Two loose balls, they get both tie-ups, and now it winds up being a turnover. That's definitely feeding off the block from Gore emotionally. And that pressure defense has paid off the last couple of trips down the court. With the possession arrow, the Mountaineers get the basketball. They go inside to Gorey, and he powers it in. Tough, tough for Richter's right now. And Kevin's going to take a timeout. He's going to make some adjustments. They are just literally pounding it inside right down Richter's throat. It is the first call timeout of the afternoon. Therefore, it is a full timeout. Biggest lead of the half belongs to the Mountaineers. 18-13 over Rutgers doing the job with their big guys inside. The power that Gorey has inside, and he is putting it on display so far today. All right, here's why they pay the analysts the big money. Let me break this down scientifically. What they did is they threw it to Gorey, and he turned and dunked it in your face. That's what <laughs> happened on that play, and that's what West Virginia has done the last few possessions. Right now, Rutgers has no answer for it. Gorey winding up what has been a fabulous career for West Virginia. Just too bad, I think, in some ways, Bob, that he's had to play all of his games on the road away from Morgantown. Yeah, he see. probably is very underappreciated just for that reason, John. He's added another element, the outside game that we talked about at the top. You see he's got six points, three for four, always shooting a good percentage, over 50%. And this little nuisance press that you said earlier, John, really keeping Rutgers off balance. They don't have any flow offensively right now. And now West Virginia going to show them a little 2-3 zone. McGorry did have a double-double, 16 and 11 in that game between these two teams on January 15th. So you know the Knights are aware of what he can do. Stopping him, however, can be another problem. Yeah, absolutely. Flory's on the court for the first time. Salvi is still out there. Got the start today. And he's tied up and taken away by D'Alessio. Third turnover by the Scarlet Knights. D'Alessio looks to Gore. He'll shoot from the baseline and nails it. Oh, the Mountaineers are clicking on all cylinders right What's now. What's not to like about that young man? He just, he knows how to play going in and out. Look at the defense again. Another steal set up by the senior Jason D'Alessio. Got a piece of that from behind. Here's Armstead behind his back. I'll tell you what, I'd keep looking inside, wouldn't you? Well, Rutgers now has gone to a little matchup zone. They don't play this very often. But he feels, obviously, Kevin does that. He's got to do something to slow down the pounding the ball inside. Armstead buries the three. His first shot goes. Armstead's 54th three-pointer, and it's all of a sudden a 10-point West Virginia lead. Wow. Well, that's a coach's nightmare. You go to the zone to try and take away the inside, give away two wide open looks on the perimeter. Gorey's baseline jumper, and then that three by Armstead. An official's timeout with 11.27 to play in the half. Mountaineers doing everything right. Here's the three-pointer just into the game for Armstead. AT&T, seven cents a minute. For Kevin Bannon, they all haven't come the same way. They went inside, then when they went to the zone, Rutgers did. West Virginia went to the perimeter. Only so many fingers you have to plug the holes in the dike. You got to figure out some way to get West Virginia under control. These two teams have met quite often. Of course, they both used to be in the Atlantic 10. Maybe even the Eastern Eight at one time, and the last meeting was at the rack, and thanks to a shot with six seconds to go by Bowman, the Mountaineers won that game. So a little bigger lineup right now for Gail Catlett with Moss and Bowman and Gorey all on the court at the same time. Salvi for three, too strong. D'Alessio has the rebound. He's a very, very solid performance by D'Alessio, the walk-on so far. Yeah, they've gotten a lot for the return for all the scholarship money they've given. Well, that's right. He doesn't have any scholarship money. That's right. He doesn't. He has played very well so far this afternoon. Maybe they'll kick in some money for grad school, huh? We'll pass the hat at the table here, maybe. Look, inside again, and not quite. Does not get the roll, but will go to the line. That's going to be the second on Joel Salvi, and I mentioned Joel has fouled out of six games this season. Uh, take a look here again. Once Rutgers goes back to the man-to-man, -man, good position by Gorey. And that's the thing I was impressed when I saw him last week, and again today, he just knows how to play. He knows where to get the ball. When he gets it, keeps his composure, gives you a little head fake. And now, because he's that, such a threat to shoot it from the perimeter, everywhere he gets it, you've got to respect that fake, and he knows how to take advantage of that. Well, two of the three who are left from that team that made it to the Sweet 16 a couple of years ago will be finished this year because D'Alessio was on that team, Gorey was on that team. The only other player is Brooks Berry who was on that outstanding team that Gail Catlett had. 
And at the line, he makes one out of two. And leading scorer so far this afternoon is Gorey with nine. The run continues now, a 12-0 West Virginia run. What a backcourt violation. Sir. Billet did not clear the line before he took the pass, so that pressure, you call it token, but it's really worked for the Mountaineers. Well, it has kept Rutgers completely off balance. As I talked about at the top, they had problems with the press early in the year, but they've been doing much better with it in the last couple of games. Today, they're really struggling. Well, I think part of that has to be the maturation of Billet. Well, there's no question when you're a point guard. Look at D'Alessio. D'Alessio. <laughs> That's five for Jason D'Alessio. He wants the basketball. He wants his offense, and right now, John Cowell is going to talk to the two big guys inside, Bowman and Dabney. This is a nice little move by D'Alessio. You know, this, they talk about the mid-range jumper being a lost art. Gives the up fake. Gets a little 12-footer. A little fadeaway move left, there. Little fade away. Very, very nice. And he's giving them solid minutes. And again, the pressure with different looks. Sometimes they trap on the other side of midcourt. Sometimes they don't. That's the good thing. Get in the middle of the floor for Rutgers. That's the first time they've done that. And that makes the press go away in a hurry. I'll tell you what, Jason D'Alessio making all of us former walk-ons feel proud right now. <laughs> Playing for walk-ons all around the country. Exactly right. That's blocked by Gorey, his second of the afternoon. You look at this run that West Virginia's on, and you wonder how they're 13 and 13, don't you? Right. Well, they talked to, I talked about off the air with you during the commercial break. There's only twice I've seen them in person in both games. I don't understand, because they should have beaten Connecticut at Connecticut last week, and they look like world beaters this afternoon. Of course, everybody looks good when the shots all fall. That okay. helps. <laughs> Bowman's turned around. It's good. What else? All right, but let's get, they're going inside, they're hitting threes, they're making jumpers off the dribble, they're making full-court press work, they're playing good half-court defense. What's not to like, John? Well, a second time out. That's kind of unusual for a coach to use two in the first half, but at this point, Kevin Bannon is doing just that. Let's take a look at some other scores brought to you by ESPN.com, part of the Go Network. Other scores from today in the Big East, Notre Dame and Georgetown. The Irish need every single win they can get their hands on right now. Well, that's, uh, that's an important game. Georgetown, of course, playing to try and be the number seven seed. And then there's seventh ranked Temple, trying to recover from that loss last week, two points ahead of GW. Yeah. They're playing for a different kind of seed, the NCAA seed. That's right. Florida, Kentucky tied early on. Florida, the Gators have had a terrific season. What a great year they've had, and what an upside down sto story in the standings in the SEC. Yeah. Corey's done it a record pace, left hand, gets up quickly. Not quick, he jumps, John. He gets off the floor so fast. Kind of reminiscent there of Baton Thomas, who blocks most of his shots with his left hand. Yes, good point. Here comes Jones into the lane. On the run, bending no good. Tipped up once, and Barry has the rebound. The Mountaineer roll continues. They're up by 15. Look at the shooting now. West Virginia started slowly. Rutgers still at 50%, but that's not good enough. They're not getting enough shots. That's they right. can't get any shots. Moss has it outside, lost the handle momentarily. This is Lyles, the freshman who's on the court for the first time. 16-0 run for West Virginia. We had nine lead changes prior to this 16-point spurt by WVU. Greer tries to end it, but can't. Dabney had it, lost it. Touch last by West Virginia. So it'll be Rutgers basketball with a new clock, 8.54 to play in the opening half. Here at the Civic Center in Wheeling, the sixth and final game here for the Mountaineers. They played eight games in Charleston, one in Fairmont, and there is a lack of concentration play that leads to turnover number six. Well, Gail, to, uh, Coach Catlett using an opportunity to rest Gory a little bit, and obviously if you're Rutgers, Kevin Bannon, you got to think, all right, this is our chance. Let's put a run together and get back in this, but they are so out of sync offensively. I'm glad you could join us here in Wheeling this afternoon along with Bob Valvano. I'm John Sanders. There's Bowman. That one is blocked and a foul called on Dabney. Eugene Dabney. The redshirt freshman from Birmingham picks up his first foul, and the run continues for the Mountaineers. Well, the nice thing with Bowman's presence inside is you can rest Gorey and still have that nice attacking inside game, which has been the key for West Virginia. It all started well, throwing it to the block. That's what's caused the problems for Kevin Bannon, but what's uh, accentuated it for him is on the offensive end, they can't keep from turning the ball over Rutgers, which has been the one thing they have done consistently pretty well. John, they usually make less turnovers than they uh, force. Not so today. Nine so far for Bowman. It's a look of a man who's really got no answers right now, and uh, both ends, they're struggling records. 
They played very well in the five point loss to UConn coming off a disappointing performance at Pittsburgh. That was last Saturday. Dabney outside and we've got a foul inside. And Moss picks up his second. Chris Moss, the sophomore from Chesterfield, Virginia, picks up foul Chris number two. All right, Rutgers now has got to be of a mindset. It's 16. If they can get this in single digits by the intermission, they've got to consider themselves fortunate. But right now, they've got to find some way to get a fire lit because they just have had nothing going really at either end. Knights have had not, not had a chance at the line from behind. Lyles thought he had the steal. Instead, he has foul number six charged to the Mountaineers. So one more, and we'll be shooting. Kind of like what West Virginia's done. They never give you the same defensive look two times in a row. That time on the baseline out of bounds. Trap along the baseline, very close to getting another turnover. Now they're in that zone. They played man. They played some full court pressure. Long three for Billet, and finally the run ends as Billet, the freshman from Middletown, hits the three-pointer to cut the lead to 13, 29-16. So now Rutgers has to build on that, as I said, and use these last eight minutes to get this thing back to single digits. Against Dabney, it's Gorey with the turnaround. Good. 11 for Gorey. He's not going to make it easy to get into single digits. He just continues to roll, and again, we see the, the little nuisance for us where they start looking to get very aggressive right over the midline, but Rutgers' better job of getting into the middle. We talked about the last time, and that makes all the difference. Scarlet Knights went over six minutes without a field goal. Billet will try another three and hits that one. He hit eight in that 31-point game that he had against Notre Dame. He's got two tonight. Well, you knock a couple of those in, that'll shoot you back in and in a hurry. It's a 12-point game as, again, Gorey gets it low. Got to get out of the lane. Yeah, he does. I was never allowed in the lane. So. <laughs> you never had to worry about no, it. was out. never a problem. <laughs> <laughs> if I ever went in, they said, what are you doing? In here? Back where you belong. <laughs> Good patience here, but Rutgers getting a little bit more aggressive defensively. You see that shot clock at six. Delesio's long three is off the mark. So a rare miss by West Virginia. Takes us to another timeout with 7.01 to play in the opening half. A great run for the Mountaineers, and they've been opening up a 12-point lead here at the Civic Center. Gorey having a terrific afternoon. A terrific start for the first 13 minutes for the Mountaineers. They went on a 17-0 run, Bob, and they look terrific, and it takes Billet to, to quiet that. Well, he'll quiet in a hurry. He hits the threes, a 38% three-point shooter on the season. If he gets a good look at it, he can make them in a bunch. And if you're Gail Catlett, you got to be nervous about that because in the January five-game winning streak, as you see, they only gave up 29% from behind the arc, and their current losing streak... 44%. Rutgers is hot today. The problem is they haven't been able to get enough off. If they get some more off, it's down to 12 already. As we talked about, if Rutgers can get it in single digits by the half, got to feel like they have a chance. Zero's team that had a big lead against Connecticut, John. In West Virginia and not able to hold on. Rutgers would like to do the same thing today. Well, keep in mind, they had an 18-point lead over the Scarlet Knights in their first meeting back in mid-January. Let that get away. Finally won the ball game. One of the things that started this run of opponents' threes was Notre Dame when they let a 17-point first-half lead get away, and the Irish used the three-pointers to come back and win that game going away. This is Barry to D'Alessio. They do a lot off that high post scissor, West Virginia, always sending cutters off the... And when a passer like Gorey gets it there, he's dangerous because he can hit the backdoor man or throw it down to uh, Bowman on the other block. And with his long legs, he might have been the only guy in the building who could keep his pivot foot on that last play. <laughs> I think he did travel yeah, there. Yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> and Will Bush saw it as well. Now, he passed the ball very well, as I said, the game I saw last week at UConn. Today, he struggled a little bit, but West, uh, Rutgers has taken the defense up a notch. I think they sense they could put a little run together here. But they're trying to build on those three-pointers by Billet. They need somebody else to step up. Kent has it right now. Greer got the game's first three-pointer. Tanise in the lineup goes underneath to Kent, and he'll go to the line. The foul is on Bowman. Kent using that wide body inside. 
Well, that's the first time Rutgers has even attacked the post against the zone. Even if you're not going to get a shot in there, you got to throw it in once in a while to keep the defense honest. Here it is, high low. Looks like he's going to shoot. Draws the defense. Kent with the good up fake. The basket a chance for a three-point play. But Rutgers has not even used the posts against the zone. They need to do that. Even if it's just a decoy, get it in, get it back out. High arcing free throw, and Kent struggles in that category, shooting under 50%, but completes the three-point play, and they cut the lead to nine. They're where they want to be, at least for right now, and still plenty of time in the first half. The three is too strong. Gorey has it stripped on the way back up. Very fortunate there, Rutgers was, because Gorey got the good position, was getting ready to finish, and stripped him down low. Yeah, I think he would have flushed that one, wouldn't I he? got a feeling he would have. <laughs> Kent taps it out of bounds. Kent plays well at the defensive end, leading his team in steals. That's going to be on Dabney. Or no, excuse me, on Tanise. Abidas Tanise. Still, still not in the penalty, though, so it's, uh, you want your inside guys battling. That's what he's supposed to do in there. Well, they've got some bodies they can use inside if they need. We haven't seen Kareem Wright yet. He's a freshman. He's another pretty good-sized player, 6'9". Armstead has had some of his best games ever in Charleston. Galesio fouled by Billick. First on Todd. Galesio will go to the line and shoot a pair. And the way he's going, you're expecting to make them both, don't you? Uh, he's, been, he's just been solid. you got to be happy. You, you, I know it's been well documented, John, but you can't help but feel for the West Virginia kids that come to a program. This is the last thing they expected to do is play this whole year in all these different arenas well from their campus, and especially the seniors. I'm sure they didn't envision going out on a year like this. But uh, as uh, we talked about, Delessio making the best of his opportunity to start today for his last regular season game. He's played really solid. The hard work on... The asbestos situation in Morgantown really hasn't started yet, and they're hoping to have it done by the middle of October, but they've got some work to do. And obviously everybody associated with the program, especially those of us that do the games, would like to get back to Morgantown. Crazy situation this year for the Mountaineers. The Coliseum is one of the best places to play. Here comes Jones down the lane and jams it on. Rutgers has a little of the uh, proverbial momentum on their side right now. They need to stop at this end, get this thing. It's already nine, and they uh, have still five minutes left. They can be right back by halftime. Things keep going the way they have the last three or four minutes. Well, the one thing that is familiar to the Mountaineers is this court, because they take it with them wherever they go. I they... like that. Half court will travel. And here's another steal. Rutgers has turned the game around. Fourth. Mountaineer turnover. Here comes Greer into the lane. Goes outside for Jones and a three. It's short. Probably Greer should have taken the first shot he had. He had a good look at it. Jones really was not on balance. You only get anxious. You got with plenty of time. They've got it back down to nine. It's still four and a half minutes in the first half. They just need to relax a little on the offensive end. They've still had a hard time getting in a rhythm at the offensive end. Delessio looks to Gorey. He'll shoot a three. Comes up a little short, and the foul on D'Alessio. That's a good block out right there. It's going to get him to the line. Foul is called on number 20, Jason D'Alessio. There's Dante Jones. We talk about him moving up among the elite in this conference next year. We also talked about how Rutgers need some easy baskets, and they have had very few of those. That's uh, very hard when every basket has got to be blood and guts. you got to get some cheapies, and uh, the best way to do it if they press is to to break it or in transition off a steal or a miss, and that's what they got there. To shoot one and one. Delessio to the bench as Lyles comes back on. Moss also returning for the Mountaineers. Neither one of these teams real effective at the line. Rutgers shoots it at 65 percent, and West Virginia about 64 percent. And one of Gale's freshmen, Keith Kincaid, is going to report. Well, look, the college basketball has always been, remains, despite the great presence of the Gorys and the Bowmans, a guards game. And that is what you wonder about when teams have leads, decision making, and uh, what you see right now, frankly, very inexperienced guards, both teams, but West Virginia particularly. And uh, they have a lot of guys that, uh, this young man right here, Lyle, is a guy that Gail you know, Catlett's very high on, but no experience for, no substitute for experience. And they don't, just don't have a lot of it. He's had kind of an up and down first season for the Mountaineers. Armstead gets it inside to Bowman. 
Draws a double team and throws it away. Lead to Billet. Armstead and Moss chasing and Billet is able to finish it off. So Jeff in double figures with 10 already. Five point game. Back come the Scarlet Knights. And Gail Catlett says that's enough. I want a timeout. It's like pocket billiards here. We got runs guy. Willie Moscone going to get out there soon. We got one team then the other in the uh, tale of two cities here in the first half. Well I think you called it though. I think it was the three pointer by Billet that really kind of got him going. He made another three and then that last two. So he has helped this run by the Scarlet Knights. Uh, both teams really have been fueled by their defense. Rutgers got this turned around at the defensive end when they finally started able to get some stops. It's led to some easy baskets. You saw the dunk before. Now you see the lay in. That lucky it wasn't a three point play for West Virginia. Might have been a foul call there. Both teams have gotten a lot of things started with their defensive efforts. Well, look at the freshman point guards and the comparison for the season. Of course, Billet more of a scorer than Lyles. Yeah, I was going to say their roles are very different, but one thing you can say is they both uh, have had to play very, maybe even two prominent roles for their teams. I don't know if it's fair to say that about Billet because he's such a good shooter, but frankly, uh, both these teams could use a little bit more experience in their backcourts, but they uh, are promising to have good careers, both these guys in this conference. Well, Kevin Bannon knew that there were going to be times that Billet would struggle, but he said, hey, he's going to be my point guard, and he has certainly matured as the season has gone on. Lyles went through a brief suspension. As a matter of fact, at the game here earlier this season, he was suspended at halftime for arguing with the coaches. And it won't cut it with Gail Catlett. Bowman draws the double team. Almost you know throws it away. Oh. Very fortunate for West Virginia. Yes, yeah. very fortunate. Panis picks up his second foul. You talk about the development of young players. Talking to Kevin Bannon before the game, he said he's tried to remind himself, we know we're young. You know, I think next year we we're going to really reap the benefit of giving some of these young guys minutes. But he said, in all candor, he just feels like their progress maybe should be a little further than it is. And that's the thing that frustrates any coach. But, you know, I've never talked to a coach who's completely happy with the team's progress. And that's what makes coaching what it is. You always feel like there's more you can do. Well, even Jim Bayheim started, what, 19 and 0? He probably wasn't smiling all the time, was he? <laughs> I didn't see him giddy too often. <laughs> I don't think Giddy is in his vocabulary. I don't think so either. Moss hits both. That'll take us to a break. West Virginia leading 35-28. Still 323 remaining here in the first half. West Virginia has the lead. The Mountaineers had a 17-0 run early. And as you pointed out, Bob, now it's the Scarlet Knights' turn. Well, basketball's always been a game of runs, and you don't know what's going to trigger it. You know, West Virginia fed off the energy from that block by Gorey. I think you're right, John. I think Rutgers is feeding off that three-pointer by Billet. He made one, made a second one, and turned up on the defensive end. He is, as you see, a fine three-point shooter on the season. He knocked in two back-to-back, -back, and that's really seemed to trigger the Scarlet Knights, who turned it up at the defensive end at that point. You know, we talked about the Coliseum being a great place for West Virginia to play. There's no place better than the rack, in my estimation, and that place really gets rolling. Yes. Got a lot of charisma to that place. West Virginia back to the zone now. Jones now to Billot. Rims out. Kincaid has it stolen by Billet. Back come the Knights. That was a mistake by the freshman. Lyles had the man, gave him the wrong pass. Maybe a bounce pass there. Just enough so it would be turned over. Denise. And he hits it. Yeah, uh, like so many of the players, uh, foreign players, got to be able to shoot it. They don't let you play overseas unless you can shoot it. That's exactly right. Here is Gorey. He has quieted a little bit, but a good feed there to Moss. A little too aggressive in the trap that time for Rutgers. Left the back end open. Here's where they've done a better job in the press. Getting it to the middle. And that's really opened things up for them. The kid actually had Tanise open there briefly. Didn't see him. Greer for three from outside. Tapped out of bounds by Jones. It'll be West Virginia basketball. Two minutes, 12 seconds before halftime. And at half, we'll have the National Car Rental Halftime Report. Check out the Big East Wire. Look at some of the exciting moments in what has been another terrific Big East basketball season that's winding down today and tomorrow. All the way under as Kincaid missed the shot. Moss missed the tip and finally stayed with it and got it. Good effort by Moss. That's with the key. We talked about it at the top. Dominate inside. Three chances at it. It almost doesn't matter what your shooting percentage is if you're getting three tries at it. Jones around Lyles. 
think Lyles was trying to foul him, thought he was going to the basket, and somehow it's West Virginia with Armstead feeding Dory. He is fouled. If you're Kevin Bannon, this has got to be particularly disappointing because you did all that work to give. We talked about trying to get in single digits by the half. They looked like they were going to tie it by the half. And now if Glory knocks down one of these, they're back down 10 again. This has been like four games. You get your money's worth here today in Wheeling. You get about four games for the price of one. Now more subs about to check in as Bowman will return, Brooks will return, and another one of the uh, West Virginia freshmen, Jaeger, will come on for the first time this afternoon. Gail Catlett. On his team has a lot of freshmen for the first time. Five on this team for the first time in eight years that he's had that many freshmen. Well, you can make the case for both these teams. Their best days may very well lie ahead, as young as they both are. Well, Rutgers certainly one of the youngest teams in the conference. They have only one junior that starts normally. So everybody else, freshmen and sophomores. Gorey has 13 points in the first half, and back they go to double digits, up by 11. This is when they've had trouble and they've tried to dribble it through the press. Oh, but Billet with a nice play there. Though. And he won't miss from there too often when he gets to the foul line. Billet gets it back. A fresh clock with a minute 20 to play in the first half. Gurry hit that opening three, but he has been quiet since. That foul is going to be on Jaeger. So just into the lineup. Jaeger picks up the foul. That's what Rutgers wish they had the play on rule in soccer because Billet would have had the wide open look. He wouldn't have missed too many from there. In fact, he wound up shooting and making it, but I'm going to send, instead send the big guy to the line for the one plus. Tomise is a 68% free throw shooter. At one point, there was a huge difference in the turnovers, but one reason that the Knights have gotten back in is those turnovers have evened out. Yes. And Again, we see another run possibly in the making here. This will be the third in this half alone. Lyles with a three, and he rattled out to two. It is a two-pointer by Lyles, his first field goal, and it's a 13-point lead for the Mountaineers. Their biggest lead has been 16. That's where you want the ball, right in the middle of the floor. And Greer gets inside, now has to look for some help, almost throws it away. But look at the space. You see, Rutgers all out of balance, and that's what the, this changing defense from West Virginia has done. You see three guys bunched up. No, no a good floor balance. Billet's three. That's what they need. Billet got him settled there, did a nice job, because it was out of whack. Got him resettled, got the good spacing, and he wound up being the beneficiary. The wide open look from the top. That is his third three-pointer. He has 13 to match the total of double zero. Marcus Gorey leading his team with 13. Tried to step to the lane, and yep. he took some little tippy-toe steps. Well, we'll see what Rutgers does here. Shot clock will be off. They've got a chance. I said to get it under 10. I didn't envision it happening this way, but if they <laughs> score, it'll be under 10 after having cut it way down. We got back to within five at one point. It looked like they were going to go all the way as they were on that 15 to 6 run, but West Virginia has answered. Wide open look again by Billet. And yep. he got it. So uh -huh. Billet with 16, four three pointers here in the half. And that makes it an eight point at intermission. So the Scarlet Knights have survived the 17 0 run early by the Mountaineers, find themselves trailing 43 to 36 as they go to the locker room at the Civic Center in Wheeling. We are about to start the National Car Rental Halftime Report. We will do that when we continue. Halftime score Mountaineers on top of the Knights, 43 36 is our halftime score. Terrific shooting first half for Billet, canning the fourth of his three-pointers. He has 16. We'll be right back. John Sanders, and let's take a look at some of those highlights. Obviously, we're going to see Marcus Gorey on these highlights. There's a lot of highlights as explosive as this game's been, and it starts with the big fella inside for West Virginia. He certainly made his presence felt right at the outset. We said they had a pounded inside, simple post-up, catch, turn, and flush. No surprise there. But here is another part of his game that we talked about at the top of the show. He's been able to step away from the basket and shoot the jump shot, even going behind the arc. That's a two-pointer, but he's been able to score from the perimeter, John. Now, this is what really helped turn it around for Rutgers. They finally started attacking on the inside. You see Kent on the high-low, 
Good pump fake, gets the bucket, made the free throw to make it a three-point play, and by doing that, starts opening up the perimeter. Nobody better from the perimeter than Bill, and here he gets a great look right from the top, and he helps shoot them back in it, but he really started by getting the ball down inside, making the defense collapse a little bit. Our Buick first half stats, and both teams with those runs offensively are shooting the ball very well. Now, Rutgers shooting well. They're going to limit the turnovers and limit the points in the paint. 18, as you can see, for West Virginia. And there is a difference in that three-point shooting, as you expected we would have. We've got more to come. Back to start the second half from Wheeling, West Virginia. Big East basketball continues after this. Ready to begin the second half of play here. This has been a pretty good ball game so far, Bob. I think both teams, if you're Rutgers, you're a little disappointed because you did make a run to get back in there, and then you kind of let them slip away a little bit. And they had big three right before the half, though, because they had it to five, as you said, John. Now it's only seven. They had the ball to start the second half, and really, though, they have been riding the young shoulders of Mr. Billet. 16 points. They need somebody else to step up. Gorey's at 13, but he's had a little help from Calvin Bowman, who's had a solid half also, four for seven for nine points. So Rutgers needs to find a second scorer to step up here. Maybe Greer, he got that first three-pointer to start the game, but then did not score after that. And Jones with only eight points at halftime. Oh, that's just about half of his season average. Here is Greer to Jones. Watch Bella here, West Virginia in the zone. And when they tried to go oh, back God. door, it surprised everybody, including Gorey, who simply tapped it out of bounds. And blocked that in self-defense. I don't that's think right. anybody expected the ball to go over there. Still enough time on the shot clock. They got 14. Rutgers needs a good look on his first possession. It's like putting a run together because they had the last possession of the other half, and now they'll get the first one here. They can put five, six unanswered points there without giving the ball up. Panice getting a start in the second half. Kicks it outside. Billet on the way for three off the mark this time. Tapped back out, but Panice is there. Inside and a foul on Barry. Well, good foul because the big foul is not great from the line. But Rutgers, good start there. Got the offensive rebound. The one thing the zone does is susceptible to offensive rebounds. And Rutgers got it. On the tap back, Tanise with the look inside. Nice pass. And a smart foul there. You don't want to just concede the two. Make him earn it from the strike. Well, on the tap back, Barry had the right idea. He just tapped it to the wrong guy because he couldn't get his hands on it, so he tried to knock it to a teammate. Kent, who shoots less than 50% from the line, is two of two. Shaq's got it straightened out from the stripes, and now it's the foul shooting gods have decided to bestow their blessings on some different players here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you never know, do you? I think it's safe to say he gets enough arc on it. Yes. And Greer saves it to Tanise. Oh, another offensive rebound. Here comes Jones. Jump stop. Puts it up. Bending no good. Tip try no good. And yeah, Gorey with that strength along the rebound on the baseline. Barry pulls up for three. That's too strong. Greer on the weak side. Not sure he wanted that one. As long as they've been playing defense, you want to hang on to it for a second or two, knock it around a bit. Again, Jones to the jump stop, and this time he nestles it in the net, moves to double figures with 10. Dangerous for West Virginia right now. Rutgers is within four, and very much, once again, the momentum back their way. We've had our four momentum shifts already in this game. That's where you want it. Throw it in there, see if he can make a stop to the run. Working on Tanise, too strong. Tanise yeah. getting minutes, obviously, John, for that reason, just to give a big body for Gorey to have to shoot over. No, they tried to go to him, but very it was lucky. saved. Very fortunate. Rashad Kent, Greer for three, hit his first one, and that is his second. Jeff has not shot, shot very much so far this afternoon, but he shoots his team back to within one. And now another run. This is going back to the end of the first half. Rutgers has put a run together, cut the 10-point margin to one. They have scored the first six points of the second half. Tipped up and in by Barry. And they, the West Virginia looks on their offensive end like Rutgers did in the first half. There's no rhythm right now. Uh, they threw it into Gorey, and you know what? It might have been wise to try and do that again. Why not dance with the girl that brung him? He's still the best weapon they've got. And uh, they might want to get back in the rhythm where they can pound it to the big guy. Billet with a good feed and a foul. Amazing how things, one end feeds off the other. I mean, why should they be struggling at the defensive end just because the offense is out of sync? But they are. I mean, Rutgers went through that press like uh, the proverbial knife through the butter in the first half. They labored every time West Virginia extended the defense. That time, went right through it. And I think in large measure because they're out of sync on the offensive end of the Mountaineers. Kent will go to the line in the first half. And there are some of the faithful who've made the trip from Morgantown. It's a little over an hour to get here. And 
Kent now has missed his last two. They were having trouble when they got to half court in the first half. They just couldn't really do anything. Much better tempo and movement of the ball in the second half. Zipped right through it. They started to pass the ball in the middle, which opened it up, but this last time they didn't even need to do that. Not trying to make the last quote unquote home game successful for the Mountaineers. Well, you take that group of Mountaineer fans that you just saw and multiply it by about 10, and that's what you have when you get to Morgantown, where they have not been all year long. Well, West Virginia getting hurt on effort plays right now. Two stones from the line by Kent, but Rutgers turns it into a positive, gets the rebound. Now they'll get a set play on the baseline on the out-of-bounds. And the other thing, the foul's beginning to pile up because both Moss and Brooks Berry have three. So fouls could be a problem. That is three early fouls here in the second half. And that's been a problem that's hounded Rutgers all year, especially Salvi and Kent. Nice pass by Tanise, but Kent could not hang on. Jones gets it back and is fouled. Well, everything going right this way right now. We've been at this end of the court for a long time. <laughs> it's, been, it's been like a football game with field position here. Ball loose, loose ball. Give Rutgers credit. They're coming up with the loose balls. Tough call there. Gorey tried to get a position for a charge. Got called for the block. That is his first foul, and Billet hits another three. And we're tied. 19 for Todd Billet, and the Scarlet Knights have come all the way back. And they've come back in a hurry here in the second half. Really, John, they've come back twice, in fairness. They're down right. double digit two different times. Armstead tries to answer with his three and does. That's the second for Lionel Armstead, and it's a three-point lead again, three minutes into the second half. That drives coaches crazy. Make a three and give a three right back. The thing I like about Billet, he's, he's shooting well, but he's not forcing it. He's not doing anything extra. He's getting it in the flow of the offense and, and nailing the shots when they're there. Yep. Absolutely. It's cliched, but it's true. You have to let the game come to you, and that's what he's doing. Denise over Gorey missed the shot. D'Alessio has the rebound. Well, at least they get it in there, though, and keep the defense honest. They have to do that on occasion. Off the screen from Moss, bending, bending, good. Nine points for D'Alessio. He's had a solid game right from the outset. And now another run. It's remarkable how this game has just been run after run. Mountaineers back to a five-point difference. Jones misses that one. And Gorey corrals the rebound. Greer got in there, had a piece of it. Now D'Alessio starts up. Finds Gorey, he's going to shoot a three. That's short. Also quick. <laughs> Out of bounds. 15-58 remaining in the game. Right now it's a 50-45 to 45 lead. This is an official timeout. So we'll be back to Wheeling after this. Knocks it down off the good look. And of course, Billet all day has been on fire. And that's the one thing if you were Gail Catley, you had to be concerned about. Even when things were going well for West Virginia, Rutgers has been able to shoot a good percentage behind the arc. And we talked about uh, how that has not been a good omen for West Virginia. Look at Rutgers last time, 22%. Today, 50%. That's such a big part of their game and such a big part of West Virginia's problems during this losing streak. Teams hurting them from the outside. Billet with five and Greer with two this afternoon. Accounting for the three-pointers made by the Scarlet Knights. Comes all the way back to Jason D'Alessio. He'll be picked up by Billet when he comes across half court. Just over four minutes into the second half. Here's Bowman. Maybe touching for the first time in the second half. D'Alessio from the side. And that's a career game for Jason D'Alessio. 11 points. Only the second time he has scored in double figures in his college career, and it happens on senior day, a career game, 11 for D'Alessio. He's played very, very well. Even the little thing like the inbounds pass, smart enough to let it go into the backcourt. A lot of guys might have panicked there, turned it into a turnover. He just let it go into the backcourt and wound up getting a good look uh, jumper for his ball club. Three won't go. Here comes Armstead. That goes off his foot. Greer winds up with it. Bad turnover when you've got all the momentum like West Virginia. And D'Alessio has to give the foul. He's got three. He is the third Mountaineer with three, and D'Alessio's having quite a senior day. What a smart player, though. Nice look. He, he, uh, much like you talk about with Billet, although certainly, of course, not nearly as an uh, offensive a force, but letting the game come to him, knocking down the open shots. Even this little play. This was a smart foul right here. 
This team has all the momentum. Don't give up the easy basket. Make Rutgers earn something to get this momentum back. He's been a very heady player today. Well, they've wiped out that quick start that the Knights had to, the, to begin the second half. By stretching it back to seven. That was the halftime lead. Dabney up with a short hook that won't go, and Gorey gathers in the rebound. Back comes the freshman, Lyles. They go to Bowman, working on Dabney. And Dabney fouls him. That'll be number two on Eugene Dabney, who went to Fourth Union before coming to Piscataway. These straightforward stuff when they throw it to the block, but these young men have done a good job of making the proper read. Get a feel for where the defense is. Somebody runs at you in a double team, try and find the cutter. You got an isolation, you go one-on-one, -on -one, take it to the space, draw the, draw the foul, put the little baby jump shots. They've done a little bit of everything in there, both Corey and Bowman. Bowman at the line, converts. Now two of three, and he goes to double figures with 10. Gorey still at 13, and Alessio is in double figures as well. I mentioned with 11, a career game for him. Well, you like when the big guys can make free throws. This guy made 13 in a row against UConn last week, Bowman. So certainly if you put him on the line, he's going to make you pay. He made three of four so far. The lead is nine, the biggest of the second half. Back to Greer. He will shoot a three, and he hits it. That is his third three-pointer of the game. All of his field goals have been threes. Nine total for him. 54-48. West Virginia. There's been very lit few stretches in this game, John, where teams have traded baskets. They've been always been baskets in bunches both ways. Gorey goes inside, and right along the baseline is fouled underneath. That's going to go on Jeff Greer. It'll be Jeff's first. Jeff, of course, the brother of Ricardo Greer, who is an outstanding player for the University of Pittsburgh and the best offensive rebounder in the conference. And it's not always because he follows his own misses. <laughs> That's one way to pad the stats. Throw it up there three times and get it back each time. West Virginia would do well to be able to for lack of a better word, just uh, scrimmage a little bit here. They could get a basket, give up a basket, get a basket, give up a basket, just kind of hold Rutgers at bay for a bit. But, boy, this has been nothing but a game of runs. Now, Delesio goes out as Armstead is back on, along with Gorey, Moss, Bowman, and Lyles. Those are the five on the court right now for West Virginia. It's Greer, Billet, Jones, Kent, and for the first time in the second half, Joel Salvi comes on. Well, again, Rutgers needs a lift right now. He's been the guy who's done that for him all year. And they'll try and put another run together. See if they can dig out of the hole for the third time. Here is Salvi. And deflection and a steal by Marcus Gorey. Active with the hands, block shots, gets hands into passing lanes. Creates good things. Utilize that wingspan. Going to take a look at Moss that time on the block. Good strong move to post up. Well, I mentioned Moss is one who's going to have to pick up the scoring next year for West Virginia. When with Gorey gone, he'll no doubt be a starter on a regular basis. They've been using him primarily off the bench in his sophomore season. Defense that time by Rutgers trying to run Armstead off the baseline screen on the out of bounds play to get a look. Flores did a nice job getting through it. Still 20 seconds on the shot clock. 13 left in the game. Did Greer push off inside or was that on Moss? Well, they'll stay here, Jody says, so I assume it's on Rutgers. It is Greer. This is good for West Virginia right now. They need a little, take a deep breath with the lead time. Every time they get the lead, turn around, Rutgers is running it right back at them. Eight-point lead, drawing a couple of fouls right here, getting Greer and some foul difficulty. That's three on him. He'll take a seat. He has made all those fouls in a minute. That's perfect for today, John. Everything's happening in bunches today. 
Every minute has been different. <laughs> Absolutely. Here's Gorey from outside. He's inside the arc and rattles it home. 17 That's points Marcus for Marcus Gorey. Uh, I just, I really like him. I don't know. Uh, sometimes I guess he's been up and down. But the games I've seen him, he's been a lot more up than down. Here's an impossible turnover. Held ball. Held ball. It'll be West Virginia basketball. Good hustle that time by Lyles. So often today, the runs have been started by defense. Lyles gets the hand in, stop the crossover dribble, ball on the floor. Jones does a good job being the first man of the floor, but West Virginia stays with it. And they have the arrow, so they wind up with the basketball. So now Barry is back in, one of those Mountaineers with three fouls. Four different players now in the game with three personal fouls. You see how that plays out, but it's a problem right now as Greer has gone back to the Scarlet Knight bench. They tried the entry pass and it's stolen back by Jones. Gets it to Billet. Here comes Jones. Bending, bending good. Jones got the roll that time as he went into the lane, drew the foul, and put the basket down. The basket counts. I'll tell you, John, you know, the ex coach of me looks at this, and I feel for both these guys because. It's been very difficult, actually, sometimes to explain why the game has turned. Four fouls there, as uh, that could be a factor as well. You pointed that out earlier. But, I mean, why? You know, you're looking at Kevin Bannon. Why has his team gotten down double digits three times, come back twice, and maybe on the verge of coming back a third time? It seems very unusual. And Gil Calvin, much the same thing. It has been... Uh, very, very difficult to get a feel. That's, got, that's what drives coaches crazy when the teams go up and down. You, uh, you want to have something you can hang your hat on in terms of consistency. It hasn't been a whole lot of that this afternoon and probably for both these teams throughout the course of the year. Well, uh, what happened the first time they played, West Virginia had that big 18-point lead in the first half. Rutgers got back in it, and from that point on, it was very close. That's a three for Armstead. It's too strong. Bowman keeps it alive, but Kent has the rebound. Looks to Billet. Out to Salvi for a 15-footer that's off the mark. And Kincaid, who played briefly in the first half, pulls down the rebound. A little over-eager that time. Rector has looked a little bit rushed. And again, the way this game has gone, there's plenty of time. They didn't need to be quite in that much of a hurry. 11 and a half minutes remaining. It's a seven-point Mountaineer lead. Armstead will take it all the way in. That's blocked. And over the back, the foul is going to be called on Moss. I believe so that. that'll be four on Moss. Does that put us in the bonus? Well, it does put us in the bonus also. Uh, Another foul. Number 31, Chris Moss, his fourth personal team foul, number seven. So that is the second West, West Virginia, Virginia player with four fouls. Four and all of a sudden, that is a big-time problem for the Mountaineers. Absolutely. For West Virginia. And to make it worse for them, 11 and a half minutes awfully early to be in the bonus on your home court. Gives Rutgers a tremendous advantage here. Well, you look around this conference, and one of the reasons that Miami is challenging for the lead in the Big East is the fact that they shoot free throws very well. They are the best overall free throw shooting team in the league. Syracuse is another good free throw shooting team, and that has never been one of their strong Yes, that's true. Actually, both teams in the bonus now, in fairness, so it's not an a, a advantage, but you like on the home court to think that uh, at least be under the 10-minute mark before the opposition starts shooting the one-on-one. First point tonight from Lewis Flores, the freshman out of Washington Heights, New York, same area that produced the Greer brothers, Jeff and Ricardo. Jeff has had to go back to the bench with some foul problems. Not on the court right now. Flores completes the one and one. He makes both, cuts the lead down a little bit more. It is a five point difference. We'll take a timeout from Wheeling, West Virginia. Scarlet Knights trying to come back again. Lead is five right now for the Mountaineers playing their final regular season home game of sorts, although we are in Wheeling, West Virginia, along with Bob Valvano. I'm John Sanders. Glad you could spend part of your Saturday with us, and we're all excited, looking forward, as always, to Big East Championship. Starts on Wednesday, March 8th, 11 o'clock in the morning. Be there for Big East basketball, and tickets still available, 212-465-MSG1. Get them at the garden box office as well. We still don't know exactly who's going to play when, but no. we'll figure it all out by tomorrow. Doesn't matter. It promises to be entertaining based on what we've seen today. 
some of these, you know, we've had stretches where both of these teams have looked very, very good. And obviously, sometimes they've been a bit inconsistent. So I think the tournament may be much of the same. You're going to see some surprises and some brilliant play, probably some erratic play, but always going to be entertaining, as the Big East tournament always is. And the shooting has cooled off both ways. They were in the 50 plus percentile in the first half. Tanish picks up the loose ball after the Mountaineer turnover. Here is Billet. You see, a lot of people would have immediately looked to shoot there, and he did not. Well, they need a good possession here. Jones gets inside. That's one of the things he's terrific at is penetrating, coming to the jump stop. 15 for Jones. Very important because they really don't have a low post game to speak of. And if you got, you're going to get offense in the lane, it's got to be from a slasher like that. And that opens up the rest of the passing lanes and the perimeter game. So that's a very, very important bucket for, for Rutgers. And here come the Knights again, down by three. They have erased most of that 10-point deficit again. <laughs> it's made for a very entertaining afternoon. Kincaid for three. That's too strong. The rebound to Jones. I think maybe the team that makes the last run will win. That right? could very well be. And we have really seesawed with these scoring runs this afternoon. Flores with some penetration to Salvi. He wanted to shoot. Well, that's smart. Get in the lane, get back out of the lane. That's what you want to do. Move the defense around. Flores goes baseline. Blocked by Gorey. What a challenge. That guy, good recovery, though. And Jones is all alone. Dante Jones with 17 points. Yeah, but give Lewis Flores the, the credit for that one. After the block, went right back, got it, made the nice quick pass. And the dunk, we got a one-point game again. This is just... I'm not sure I can remember the last time I've seen a team come back from three 10-point deficits. Certainly to get even once and maybe here again. A 9-0 run is the latest. D'Alessio tries to answer with three. It rims out. Salvi with a chance to give the Knights the lead. Here comes Billet. Down the lane. Hangs. Shoots. Bending. Bending. Good. So Rutgers, as we've talked about, has been down double digits three times. Once took it from 17 to 5, once got it even, and now has taken the lead. It is 59-58. This will be a 30-second timeout. So the run continues. It's now an 11-0 run. And instead of starting it, it was Billet who finished it. Well, here's the great block by Gordon, but now watch Flores stay with it, makes the steal, and then a good composure to find the pass for the dunk. And now, John, you've already talked about Billet's great court sense for a freshman. Knows when to go, when not to go. Lane opens up for him. Jump stop. Little soft leaner. And Rutgers, almost remarkably, on top now. 11-0 in the last 3.06, 59-58. And West Virginia would be wise now to try and put it in one of the big guys' hands for a look. The last couple times down, as much as D'Alessio's played well, not sure they need a jumper from him. And the last uh, few possessions really haven't seen uh, Gorey and Bowman make much happen. That's who, where they want to go right now with Rutgers in the middle of this run. You want to answer with your go-to guys, and those are clearly the go-to guys. Tenth lead change and the first time that the Knights have been ahead since it was 13-12, and that was right before West Virginia went on a 17-0 run. Bowman draws a crowd. Inside the arc, the lefty Lyles a miss. Brooks has, a Barry has the rebound and is fouled on the play. Now the crowd reacting, but actually it's not this scoreboard had a rubble if I was when I mentioned that both teams were in the bonus. I was surprised that according to my stat sheet, they had seven up there for records. It is just five, so they're not the one-on-one. -on -one. So it is uh, still an advantage for the Knights. It will be for one more foul. They have one more foul to give. Leading by one. First time they've had the lead in the second half. Like you showed a little matchup zone here. They don't play this very much. Bowman. Lyles with some penetration. That runner bending, bending good. That's a smart play for the young guard there. Teams in a matchup. They're obviously doing it to try and counterbalance the two big guys inside. Lyles sees the seam, takes it in there. 11 lead changes now. Despite all the runs, we've had 11 lead changes. A lot of them were early, though. Back in the early team numbers as Jones drives, lost it out of bounds. Knocked away. It'll be Rutgers ball. Kevin Bannon wants a foul, but at least he will retain possession. As far as I know, Kevin doesn't have a vote when it no, comes I don't, to... No, I don't think so. <laughs> Especially with Jody Sylvester's last regular season game. He should have two votes. That's right. Here comes Flores with penetration. That'll be goaltending. Count the basket. 
first field goal for Flores, and it is Rutgers' turn to go back on top with eight minutes to go in the game. Well, Gorey been active. He's got a number of blocks already. Makes the from the weak side, which is where you get most of the blocks. Just maybe a half a second close. late. Yeah, it was close. But uh, on the way down, and clearly goal ten. Rutgers back on top. 61-60. Scarlet Knights on top. That's a three. It's too strong. Jones right there for the rebound. He had blocked out Barry. Remember Barry playing with four fouls. Here comes Billet. Now he'll pop the three, and he hits it. So Billet with 24 points, another three-pointer. He has six this afternoon. Remember, he had eight in that game. He scored 31 points. Well, you know, sometimes you have to know when it's time to try for a stick in the eye, and that was one of those times. That was he felt it. Here's Barry, tries to answer the three. Bill at the rebound. This is the biggest lead the Knights have had the entire game. Salvi. Oh, that's smart. He's got it to two possessions. Now's the time to settle down a little bit, get a good look at it. Salvi inside. That's off and into the hands of Gory. Now well, Salvi plays on the motion a lot and caught up in it, but I'm not sure that's exactly the one Rutgers wanted. Bill has got the hot hand. Bumped from behind by Jones. That will be team foul number six and the second on Dante Jones. Foul goal, number 31, Dante Jones. That's Greer checks back in with foul three fouls. Six. Moss is going to return along with Armstead for West Virginia after we come back. 64 to 60. Billet has led the charge for the Scarlet Knights. They are in front. As I'm free as. Sixty four sixty the Knights have their biggest lead of the afternoon and their comeback certainly fueled by number twenty two Todd Billet. No good decisions the freshman not playing like a freshman anymore goes in the lane for the leaner. This was a gutsy little play but his team had the momentum he felt it a little emotion six for nine for behind the arc. He's shooting at about thirty eight percent for the season but John, we've talked about it all day. Even when West Virginia had the lead, you had to be concerned because when they've lost, they've given up the three ball, and they've given up a lot of them today. And this young man's one of the reasons why. Bill it with the hot hand. Eight three-pointers all together for the Scarlet Knights this afternoon. Most of them, as we mentioned, by Billet, who gets a blow right now for one of the few times this afternoon. Armstead gets it to Moss, and he's fouled. That'll be number three on Dante Jones. Greer with his three fouls is back on the court right now for West Virginia Moss with four is playing Barry who has four is not okay has gone very deep into his bench this afternoon yeah well you know when senior day and you start with an unusual lineup changes your substitution pattern obviously he's decided to give D'Alessio some minutes because he's played very well Moss's first miss West Virginia 13 of 16 at the line. It's better than normal, but those two were not too pretty. Still a four-point lead for Rutgers. The Scarlet Knights have the basketball, trying to return the favor. They lost a two-point game to West Virginia at home in mid-January. Good patience. Of course, the question is, who's going to step up and shoot it without Billet in there right now? Now 10. Got to find the shooters if you're West Virginia. That's a three. It's too strong. Moss the rebound. And Billet goes to the scorer's table to check back in for Rutgers. Two possessions was about enough with him on the bench. <laughs> Here's Gorey from outside. That won't go. Out of bounds. And it belongs to West Virginia. So this has definitely been an afternoon of runs. One of the run instigators comes back on the court. West Virginia went up 16-0, 9-0, Rutgers 15-4, 12-0, then 13-5 and 11-0. Where's Willie Moscone when you need him? We've got runs here. Who's at the table and who's got the hot, hot, hot hand, as you said, may be determined who the winner is. The last hot hand could be the winner in this afternoon's game. Although right now, frankly, John, West Virginia struggled a little bit offensively. They have not been in a rhythm the last two or three possessions. They really need to get something going again. That would be the good places to look. They're looking at Bowman and Gorey. That's where you want to throw it. Here's Gorey on the baseline, leaning in, and the blocking foul on Salvi. Well, you've got to go to your money guys, and that's clearly... Bowman set that up with a good flash across the lane. They had to respect that. 
Gorey sneaks along the baseline, puts it to the floor. You see, you see Bowman in there occupying Salvi. That's what makes him step late getting across, draws the foul. But you got to respect Bowman in there. Kept Salvi at home and let the lane open up for Gorey. 18-point afternoon for Gorey on senior day. Matter of fact, his grandmother, Betty, making the trip here. She's the one who basically raised him and had never gotten to see him play until today. Well, it picked uh, a good afternoon in terms of his individual performance. Remains to be seen if they're going to like the outcome. Yeah, you're right. It's not settled yet. <laughs> Lane violation, lane violation, so you wipe that out. It's a three point ball game with five and a half minutes to go. And there's some good pressure by West Virginia, but now numbers as Jones got himself in the air, had no place to go. Breaking the press isn't enough. You got to know what to do with it once you break it. Make as many turnovers in that situation as you do in the backcourt. D'Alessio wants to reset this offense in half court, and quickly Armstead shoots a three and rattles it home. That'll do it. Yeah, there's a good play, huh? One pass and boom, three-pointer, game time. Well, Rutgers doesn't play a lot of uh, anything, really, other than half court. Man, they've been playing this matchup zone to try and negate the inside game, and Armstead stepped up. Got to give players credit when they recognize the situation. Salvi steps through, finds Jones, puts up an 18-footer, and it's good. Well, players make plays. One end, Armstead hits the three. The other end, Salvi splitting the double team, turned what could have been a turnover into a wide-open look, puts Rutgers back on top. We've had a number of different players for all the running up-and-down nature of this game make some good individual plays in certain situations. Here's Gorey. He'll try his hand and hit. Gorey with 20 points. And there's Betty right in the middle. <laughs> well, she's got a lot to be proud of the way he's played today. Greer thought about three. Jumping out on him was Kincaid. Now Billet. Shot clock at 15. Here's Billet. He'll shoot his three. That's no good. One of his few misses. It goes out of bounds. Good defense that time. West Virginia very active in the zone. We are tied at 66-66. Three minutes and 41 seconds to go. This has been a dandy game. We'll have more from Wheeling after this message from AT&T. Brought to you by Buick. Isn't it time for a real car? By Advance Auto Parts. The best part is our people. By Bex, a beer apart. By National Car Rental, what are you waiting for? Let's go. By 7-Up, make 7-Up yours. And by Volkswagen, on the road of life, there are passengers and there are drivers. It is a beautiful day along the Ohio River. We're glad you're with us because we're having a good college basketball game this afternoon. Let's check it out with our Bex Beer Game Summary. Well, it's been a very entertaining game, no question about that. If you're uh, West Virginia, you've got to be concerned at Rutgers' three-point numbers. It's been their downfall in this losing streak, giving up the good percentage. Rutgers at 45%, Billet leading the way. West Virginia's shooting the ball well, though, over 50%. They're only a 45% shooting team on the season, and Marcus Gorey going out in a blaze of glory. A glory gory day here. There you As go. Very good. Got, he's got been sitting points. on that one since the first half. <laughs> I did. <just, laughs> I wish I was that creative. I just popped into my head, to be perfectly honest with you. But he is playing very, very well in front of Grandma and the folks here in Wheeling, West Virginia. Delesse off the gory screen, misses a three. Salvi had it. It was touched last, I think, by Armstead. But the call goes the other way, so I think the Mountaineers might have gotten a break. Yeah, I thought so. I was pointing the other way, but Jody didn't want my help. So, no. Not that I was rooting, mind you. Don't email me. I just thought it was tipped last <laughs> by the home club. Hey, after 40 years, he doesn't need anybody's yeah, help, right? I don't think so. <laughs> and uh, D'Alessio able to stay with it. And behind the billet. And he's going to take a timeout. Timeout, West Virginia.
Now let's see what the deal is there. I'm not sure. I guess Gale must feel it's that important a possession. He wants to uh, draw something up and get a good look at it. So we'll uh, see what that timeout's about. Each team has three timeouts remaining. We have three minutes and 14 seconds to play. The possession arrow right now tilted in the direction of the Scarlet Knights. And as we said, now at this point in the game, if some team makes one of the runs that we've seen, they're probably going to win the basketball Yeah, game. now you're out of time for two runs. you got maybe one more run left in you. But, you know, we talked about it at the top of the game, John. Rutgers has been in this situation so many times before. Somebody's going to have to make a play. And this last three minutes is going to be one of those stick-in-the-eye plays that could decide the game one way or another. Rutgers is going to need somebody to do that. The leading nominee would be uh, Todd Billett. But, hey, you know what? Sometimes the game doesn't doesn't uh, decide who's going to get to make the play. It just comes your way, and you better be ready. And the timeout situation is this. West Virginia has two. Rutgers has three. So we've corrected that. Armstead's three off the mark. Moss has the rebound, and it comes back out. So Armstead will try it again, and with better results. Well, that was Armstead a, has four three-pointers. That was set out of the timeout. They set him a screen for the first shot. Moss has fouled out. That's tough. Very close to a turnover, and instead it turns into a foul. And gives Rutgers a chance to go to the line. But here's Armstead. He had already taken one shot off the set play on a screen. He almost the exact same spot. Gets a look at it. Here from a different angle. You give him two tries at it, he's going to make one of them almost surely. He's a solid shooter. So Moss will have to leave the lineup. Gail Catlett's going to have to go to his bench because he's fouled out now with 2.50 to play in the game. Moss fouling out. Armstead shoots 38% from the behind the arc in the conference, so that was, explains why Gail Catlett would want to put the ball in his hands. Moss, a significant loss down the stretch here. You talked about that some 10 minutes ago, John. Now, fouls could be a, a game this close. Fouls could be a factor. I kind of saw that one coming, I think, because he had been in <laughs> foul trouble very early on. You hate to give that fifth foul at midcourt. Absolutely. It's been part of the pressure, though, that's really paid off for West Virginia. Uh, the bad news for the Mountaineers is the guy that replaces him comes back on the court also has four fouls. There's the three-point shooting for Armstead. All of his baskets have been three-pointers, and Greer to the line, a one-and-one. One. Rattles home the first. Well, as you talked about earlier, these are not teams that list foul shooting among their best attributes, but game this close, again, that could be the big play. Somebody knocking down a free throw. Made them both. He's in double figures as well, 11 for him. So each team has three players. Second, West Virginia has four players in double figures, and the Scarlet Knights have three in double figures. It's still a one-point West Virginia lead. Brooks Berry to Marcus Gorey, Jason D'Alessio. Fade away, comes up short. Rebound and a strip from behind by Gorey. They go to the court. He got the timeout. So now the timeouts will be even at two apiece there, as the Rutgers Scarlet Knights take theirs. We've talked about this a little bit. The have basketball court will travel, and they have logged some miles this year. Every game is a trip. Six and three in Charleston, hoping to finish three and three in Wheeling. They won their only game in Fairmont, and that is 3,780 extra miles. It's maybe the only team in America that has frequent flyer miles for playing home games. It's been absolutely an odyssey in the truest sense. And you, as I said, you feel for the kids. And certainly, I'm sure, and actually the administrators. I can't imagine the logistics of something like this, moving the court this often. Heck, this court has a free flight to Hawaii, probably. <laughs> That's exactly right. Yeah, one of the interesting things on the season was when they played their annual game against Marshall down in Charleston, which is one of their home courts. It was Marshall's turn to be the home team. They decided they didn't want this court. They used the one that they have on a regular basis down there. So, <laughs> little uh, gamesmanship. Little different issues than most teams have Exactly. To face. When you're talking Marshall and West Virginia University, <laughs> you're exactly right. Here is Billy. Nice job throwing the ball around the press. He's certainly not going to be able to throw it over too many people, especially with Gordy right in his grill. Good decisions by the freshman. But they used up basically 15 seconds. And now the shot clock is inside 15 seconds. Here comes Billet. Now Greer to the baseline. 
That's a two. It's short. Armstead in good position for the defensive rebound. Long push to Gorey off the glass. Yeah, Not a good Adler idea. He's going to pull his hair out in a minute. The last two possessions have been absolutely terrible for West Virginia. They certainly didn't need D'Alessio shooting a pull-up jumper on the baseline. And then that pass saved only from going in the cheap seats by the backboard. Here's Billick. That's a three. Bowman the rebound. Off balance just a little bit. You can almost tell when Billet leaves the floor whether he's going to make it or not. And he's just leaning a bit either direction. Not quite going to go down. That time just going a little bit to his right. One point lead West Virginia. 120 to play in the game. Shot clock at 20. D'Alessio three on the way. Way strong. Billet the rebound. Why would you not have the ball in Gory or Bowman's hands if you're West Virginia with the game on the line? got to at least put it in their hands and let them have the opportunity to make a play. The game is still begging for somebody to make a play late here to see who that's going to be. You know, after all these great runs, all of a sudden we get down to the two-minute mark in the game and you, nobody can find the basket. Well, maybe some of the decisions involved. That's what you talk about, inexperienced backcourts. You know, you, in that situation, you would think, as I said, for West Virginia, Gorey or Bowman would be the one taking the shot or at least having the offense go through them. Rutgers... Billet had a good look, but he did uh, kind of lean on that three-point shot, not really the shot that he would have liked to have gotten. Let's take a look at some other scores brought to you by ESPN.com, part of the Go Network, and there are some very critical games still coming up today and tomorrow in the Big East. Notre Dame, a comfortable, comfortable lead at Georgetown this afternoon. That would be a good win for the Irish. They've had some great wins. They could also wind up seventh in the Big East championship. Temple now no problem over GW. And it is Kentucky now <laughs> leading Florida. Don't ever count the cats out. That's amazing. Some terrific basketball being played in the Southeastern Conference. Bill it off the Salvi screen goes back to Joel. We're in the final minute. Greer along the baseline reverses to Billet. Penetrates, kicks it out on the wing. Jones inside, comes up short, Bowman the rebound. Still a one-point lead. Still waiting for a play to be made. And there's a foul by Billet. All those great runs that we had all of a sudden went out the window in the last three minutes. We've been sitting on 69-68 for a while. Yes, we have. Now we'll see if, again, the key play could be just going, the matter of going to the foul line and making free throws. I'll tell you what else becomes a big play. And I know a lot of coaches feel strongly about this. There's, a, there's at least a couple of games every year that are won or lost by blockouts on the free throw line in the last two minutes. Frankly, that game last week with UConn, that was a big factor. We'll see if it becomes important today, especially with West Virginia's physical dominance inside. Rutgers going to have to make sure they check off here. Lyles hit some big free throws to help the Mountaineers beat Georgetown earlier this year. That's one way to make sure you don't have to worry about a blockout. Just knock in the free throw. And that's the first point we've had since the 250 mark. So <laughs> we went two minutes and 20 seconds with the score 69 to 68. How about that, huh? We talked about runs, and then nobody could make a run in the last two minutes. And he rolls home number two. So Lyles with a pair. It is still a one-possession game in the final 30 seconds. 71, 68. Timeout. timeout Rutgers uses their last timeout. West Virginia still has two remaining. Well, let's see. That timeout, going to draw something up for three, going to try and get a quick hit for two, and then get on the defensive end and foul. This is always the coach's dilemma. Certainly the way Rutgers shoots threes, you wouldn't have to be surprised if they took it, but of course, kind you know, of is a, uh, you know, a one and done kind of deal. You hit it, you're the hero, you miss it. You pretty much have uh, put yourself in a situation where unless they miss free throws, you're all going to be on the short end. I kind of like the quick bucket, but I, how can you say you'll get a quick bucket against Gorey inside? True. He may not allow you to get that quick basket. Here are the numbers as we wind up this weekend. The 99-2000 Big East regular season. Those three teams at the top are assured of not having to play on Wednesday. They will wait until Thursday. And underneath, of course, the scramble continues. We're going to wait and see what happens with the Connecticut final game and also Seton Hall. And this, of course, is what we've been looking at all afternoon, that real scramble in the uh, bottom half of the standing. Well, you know it's close when even the Sunday games mean something, and both games tomorrow have bearings on first-round matchups in that Big East tournament. Here we go. 
25 seconds of basketball left in the regular season. Maybe. West Virginia's in the man to man. Here comes Jones. The foul is on D'Alessio. That's not the worst thing, though, no, because you knew they were going to run some sort of a play to try and get a three. Put them on the line. They're not a great free throw shooting team. Jones is pretty good. Although though. Jones is solid from the stripe, yes. He is uh, somewhere around 70% on the season. He has made all three of his opportunities this afternoon as Barry comes back in. D'Alessio goes to the bench. But if you're the Mountaineers, you know now with 18.7, they can't take the lead. They can't tie the game right. at the line. Well, unless you don't check off. <laughs> That's true. That's why you got to make sure. Take nothing for granted. Got to block out here. That's why Salvi and Kent are in the middle slots on that line as he hits the first. It's a 20 point game for Jones. And he's made all of his free throws this afternoon. Yeah. Players are making plays in that regard. Both guys go to the line, get their free throws. Not that one. And a foul. Yeah, that was an odd rebound. It was. So everyone just kind of stood. Nobody there. left their feet. That's going to go on Joel Salvi. He'll have four. And let's take a look at our Advanced Auto Parts best play of the game brought to you by Advanced Auto Parts. For the best part is our people. And certainly the best part of this offense this afternoon for the Scarlet Knights has been number 22. Well, that was a shot that gave Rutgers a four-point lead. Looked like they had all the momentum. Billet sensed it. Trying to drive a dagger in the heart of the Mountaineers, but not surprisingly today, West Virginia came right back. It is the double bonus now, so Bowman will get two cracks at it. He's made three of four this afternoon. Nice, as I said earlier, when your big guys are good free throw shooters. And this guy, solid from the line. Well, Gorey's made six out of eight this afternoon, and Bowman now has made four out of five. West Virginia shot their free throws very well. And number two goes as well. Well, that's huge. Two possessions. Four-point lead now. It'll be a timeout for West Virginia. And the Mountaineer in his last basketball game in the regular season because he is also a senior. West Virginia this afternoon is 17 out of 21 at the line. So they have held their own in that category. More than held their own. That's outstanding shooting. And some clutch ones down the stretch here. Bowman hit the uh, the big ones there. We saw Lyles do it earlier. And the, both of them uh, hit uh, two free throws. Lyles even more difficult because his was just a one and one. Bowman at least had a two shot free throw. And uh, obviously the fans are as well. They should be grateful for Gorey's fine play here. <laughs> Grandma's enjoying it. Betty's having a good time, yes, isn't she? she? Is. Made the trip to Wheeling. So are we. This has been a very entertaining afternoon of Big East basketball. It's been a good game. And again, as we said, a game with ramifications on the line. Rutgers and West Virginia both playing to improve their standings in the uh, Big East tournament. So nothing been determined yet. It is a, a two-possession game, however. Got to get a quick one here because obviously, as you said, they need the ball twice. Billet takes the handoff, races down the lane, has it blocked by Bowman. Good block. Here come the Mountaineers. Only fitting that D'Alessio had his block. The follow, though, goes. Didn't even really need to shoot it, but that was a big play. It'll be clear at the buzzer. The Mountaineers win it. They end that five-game losing streak. They had a seven-point halftime lead. The game seesawed back and forth in the second half. The seniors from Morgantown can celebrate because they get the win here this afternoon. Very entertaining basketball game. Well, ties them in the standings with Rutgers, gives them the tie break, too, because they swept the season series. So an important win for, Rut for West Virginia. Gorey finishing off with a 20-point ball game, and D'Alessio had a career high of 11 this afternoon. Dante Jones with 20. Todd Billett was terrific with the three-point shooting, finished with 24. But Rutgers falls. The final is 75-69. West Virginia defeats Rutgers University. For Bob Balvano and our entire Big East crew here in Wheeling, I'm John Sanders. Thanks for watching. Enjoy the tournament, everyone.